Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Everyday Black History. Here where we highlight the historical achievements and contributions of black men and women both past and present. As I mentioned on, on a lot of episodes, we celebrate Afro appreciation. So that's all aspects of the, as, of the African diaspora. Uh, African Americans, Africans, Afro-Latinos, people and institutions we all highlight and we all celebrate here. Now today we're going to be highlighting a man by the name of Lonnie George Johnson. And Lonnie George Johnson, um, as we all, as many people from my age remember, uh, the Super Soaker Water Gun. Lonnie George Johnson was the man who created the Super Soaker Water Gun. Now he holds, he's an inventor and an engineer, he holds over 80 patents. 80 patents, that's a lot of inventions for one person to invent. But just to give a little background information on uh, Lonnie Johnson, uh, he was born in Mobile, Alabama, and as a child, it's mentioned that he's he was uh, known to be in innovative and curious. And some of this curiosity uh, is what actually led him to being the inventor that he is today. It is known that when he was young, he reverse engineered his sister's doll to understand how the eyes closed. He, it's also mentioned that he almost burned down his house while he was trying to make rocket fuel. <laughs> so even though these uh, early inventions of his might have made his sister mad or even, you know, almost possibly caused him to be homeless, we can see, as mentioned, that he did have a curiosity about how things worked. So much so that in his teenage years, when he attended an all-black um, high school in uh, Mobile, Alabama, he attended a uh, science fair in which he was one of the few black students who was there. And he created a robot named Linux, which was a compressed air-powered robot, and he took home the first prize. After that, he went on to attend the Tuskegee University on a math scholarship, and he earned his bachelor's in mechanical engineering, and then later he earned a master's degree in nuclear engineering from Tuskegee University. Now, after college, uh, Johnson joined the Air Force, where he worked in the stealth bomber program, and he also worked at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab with a nuclear power source uh, for the Galileo mission to Jupiter. He also teamed up with science, scientists from Tulane University and Tuskegee University to develop a method of transforming heat into electricity with the goal of making green energy more affordable. He also started two technology development companies, uh, uh, Ex Accelatron Solid State and the Johnson Electromechanical Systems, also known as GEMS. They um, are two, uh, they're both uh, operate in uh, Atlanta, in the neighborhood of Sweet Auburn, the Sweet Auburn neighborhood of Atlanta, excuse me, got a little tongue tied. Now, the Accelatron Solid State Company is a company that focuses on the development and production of solid state batteries, particularly thin film batteries. Its mission, as stated, is to develop revolutionary energy storage technology as well as the manufacturing technology required for its cost-effective commercialization. The company's batteries uh, were known to boost safety, high temperature capability, and long cycle life. Thin flexible profiles, unique proprietary uh, passivation barrier and packaging solution, and high rate capability. The company is targeting military applications and implantable medical devices as initial consumers. So you can see that this is a company that has a lot of ambition that he started. His other company, GEMS, um, which was listed by Popular Mechanics as one of the top 10 inventions in, uh, in 2009 at the time, uh, this company, this system has potential applications in solar power plants and ocean thermal power generation. It converts thermal energy to electrical energy using a non-steam process, which works by pushing hydrogen ions through two membranes with claimed advantages over alternative systems. This also is operated, as mentioned, in, Sweet Aub in the Sweet Auburn neighborhood of Atlanta. 
Now, Johnson is a part of a small group of African-American inventors whose work accounts for 6% of all U.S. patent applications. So you can see that, you know, based off of this, he's responsible for a lot of inventions. But now we're going to get to his most well-known invention, which is the Super Soaker. And just to show how diverse he is, these two companies that we just talked about are on a completely different uh, wavelength from his invention that he's most known for, which is the Super Soaker. Now, the Super Soaker, he conceived while doing work in the Air Force, while he was in the Air Force. And on October 14, 1983, he applied for a U.S. patent. And on May 27, 1986, he received the patent uh, for the Super Soaker. It was initially called the Power Drencher when it appeared in toy shops in 1990. But after some tweaks and remarketing, it got its name as the Super Soaker. Selling between $10 to $60 depending on the model, the Super Soaker took off generating over $200 million in sales in 1991. Shortly after making the deal for Super Soaker with the Laramie Corporation, Laramie became a subsidiary of Hasbro Inc. in February of 1995. But being an inventor, Johnson came up with another idea, replacing the water in the Super Soaker with a toy Nerf projectile. And in 1996, he received the patent for a pneumatic launcher for a toy projectile and the like. And that was the Nerf. Now, the company Nerf um, actually um, had that toy on for sale during the same time. Now, unfortunately, he discovered that he was underpaid royalties for the Super Soaker and several Nerf line of toys that he created, specifically the Nerf Strike and Dart Tag brands. And in November 2013, he was awarded nearly $73 million in back royalties from Hasbro Incorporated in arbitration. And according to Hasbro, the Super Soaker is approaching sales of close to $1 billion since uh, its creation and since it was first put on uh, toy shelves. His uh, personal life is not much known about his personal life other than the fact that he's married and he has four children and lives in Atlanta, Georgia. But just based off what we talked about, as mentioned, his inventions, uh, the companies that he started, and the ambition of these companies, we can see that Lonnie George Johnson helped contribute a lot to black history and black culture, and he's still contributing because he's still around with over 80 patents to his name. So Lonnie George Johnson, we thank you for your contribution, and we salute you. That concludes this episode of Everyday Black History, so please stay tuned as we'll be coming with more episodes on more black inventors and scientists who contributed much to black history and black culture. So stay tuned.